Imagine as soon as you sit down in front of your TV at home, your phone instantly shows you what's on your favorite channels. Or as you walk up to your daily bus stop, your phone tells you that your bus is delayed 20 minutes, but you can take the express instead. Or perhaps you have hearing difficulties and need specific accessibility assistance at your bank. But instead of having to spend the first five minutes explaining this to the employees as usual, they're already aware of it and ready to serve you. As a developer, the key thing here is having more context so that you can provide a better user experience and then fewer or no steps at all. Hello, I'm Timothy Jordan, and this is Developing with Beacons. A common beacon that you'll recognize is a lighthouse. This simple but important technology has helped ships navigate safely through busy shipping lanes and dangerous coastlines for hundreds of years. Today's technology provides us with a new type of beacon whose underlying concept is the same, but otherwise looks a lot different. For one thing, instead of a large tower with a gigantic spinning light, they look like this, or this, and this, or even this, and they can last for years on the same battery. But more importantly, when you use Google together with your beacons, you get an open and flexible beacon standard called Eddystone as well as APIs that allow you to register, manage, and detect beacons. Let's take a look at how all these components work together. Say you've got a great idea for using beacons to improve users' lives, a service that helps commuters with public transit. It's an app that detects bus stops and train stations and provides up-to-date information concerning their favorite routes at those stops. You'll first need some beacons, one for every stop and station. Several beacon types will work, but we recommend one that supports Eddystone, which is a new open format for beacons that anyone can use. It offers a common format to build upon and a means of extending it to include new features and use cases. And it does all of this in the open on GitHub under the Apache 2.0 license. Now, these beacons work with both Android and iOS and are already available from six manufacturers today. Once you get your hands on a beacon that supports the Eddystone standard, you'll need to provision it. And then, depending on your use case, you'll want to register it with a cloud service and attach data. Provisioning is simple. It just means specifying the basic beacon settings, such as the Eddystone frame type, the transmit power, and the broadcast rate. Your beacon manufacturer should have instructions about this process, and they are likely to have either an app or APIs available for this step. Now, some beacons even come pre-configured for you. Once provisioned, your beacon can start broadcasting itself to the world. If you're deploying a physical web beacon with the Eddystone URL frame type, you set the URL in this provisioning step, and you're done. For all other frame types, you'll want to register the beacon and perhaps attach some data. Registering happens with the Proximity Beacon API by providing basic information, such as the beacon advertised identifier, status, whether it stays in place like a bus stop or moves around like an actual bus, a place ID, a lat long, and a few other fields. This step also enables various Google integrations like the Places API and the Nearby API, which we'll talk about in a moment. Finally, you can use the Proximity Beacon API to add some attachment data. This is where things really start to get powerful. You can add attachments that will have a namespace, which corresponds to your project ID in the developer console, a type, which is a string that specifies what kind of attachment this is and is unique in the namespace, and 1K of data. You'll notice by this sample data that it's enough for some strings or even some JSON, but you wouldn't want to start encoding JPEGs in here. One last thing on the Proximity Beacon API. You can also use it to manage your beacons at scale by detecting lost beacons or low battery and performing activation, deactivation, and decommissioning. Watch for these APIs to mature with your feedback over the coming weeks and months. OK, now you've got a beacon that just sits around broadcasting its ID to anyone who will listen. Well, truth be told, it's going to keep broadcasting its ID whether anyone is listening or not. And I can't decide if this is incredibly noble or perhaps sad, but let's just call it dedicated. Next, we'll need to set up our app to listen for our beacons. We could write our own service to scan for the beacons using Bluetooth LE and then look them up with the Proximity Beacon API. Or we could let the Nearby Messages API do all the heavy lifting for us. I'd recommend the latter. First, you'll subscribe to messages from the Nearby API. Included in this subscription is our transit project namespace, since we're only interested in those beacons. Nearby then keeps an eye out for these beacons. When one is sighted, 
It grabs the beacon's information, including attachments, turns them into messages, and passes them over to your app. Now that's it. We've now got working beacons and an app that uses them to make the awesome happen for our users. Beacons are all about adding context to the world, whether at a specific place like your favorite store or moving around like a food truck. With this context, you can provide an experience for your user that requires fewer steps while being richer and more accurate. We have excellent videos and documentation on all the different aspects of these platforms and format. Check them out for more details on each and to get started adding context to all the things. Thank you.